I still have them. Uh, not many. I do want to say thank you to everybody who has purchased a t-shirt. I still can't figure out how to set up my store. Um, I'm having trouble with a lot of things. I'm very busy and I just can't find the time to get this thing on my YouTube channel. But if you email me, let me know what size you are. Uh, I'm blowing out the last of these shirts for like 15 bucks. So let me know if you're interested by sending an email. All right, it's right here at the bottom of the screen. Um, it's also a clickable link in the description, but T-shirts still available. And again, thank you everybody for your purchases and thank you to all my guests for rocking my tees and spreading the word. I really do appreciate it. What's happening, TWT fans? It is so good to be back on this August 29th, 2024. And again, I am so glad to see so many of you coming back for more if you uh want to help out the podcast remember to subscribe everybody it's the most important thing you can do for the podcast and of course the most important thing you can do for me this thing is not free so hit that subscribe button as always i always want to say thank you to all of my subscribers you're what keeps me coming back for more i greatly appreciate everything that you do for me And, of course, if you want to tell your story or be a guest on this podcast, that's right, talkingwithtopher at gmail.com. That's T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. Send an audio video or type it out, but send it over to the official email of the podcast, T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. And then, of course, don't forget about the link tree. It's how you find everything TWT. So go ahead and click click that So go ahead and click that and uh, always follow and subscribe. And then, of course, copy and share. Um, And with that all out of the way, what's happening, everybody? Trying to shut off my AC right now. Hey, there we go. The fucking remote worked. Um, There we go. We already ruined the first 10 minutes. I am going to try something new, and this all revolves around fear. I am going to try and make this episode without editing. Um, There might be some, but man, I really got to try and make my life a little bit easier here. So I am going to try and do a full episode without or with little editing in it. Uh, But yeah, my fear is obviously not editing, Uh, one of them. Uh, one of my other fears, uh, I don't know if this is a week ago or a couple weeks ago at this point, you know, I have a fear of water. I have a lot of fears. I think all of us have a lot of fears. Um, and what I'm getting at here is, is what are yours? You know, have you ever thought about what your fears are? Have you ever thought about what you fear? Maybe all in your mind. Now for me, Water is something that I have never enjoyed as a kid. Um, never. Uh, I Well, I, let me retract that a little bit. Here we go again. You can't edit, buddy. Uh, so, I didn't have a fear of water when I was a child. I It's not like something I would walk up to and be like, oh, I can't go in that. It was more of a, I don't want to get wet. I'm dry. Um, so, I don't know if it is a fear fear of water because the pond wasn't scary when I was little. My pool is not scary. Other people's pools are not scary. Uh, But the ocean is frightening to me. So (laughs) I guess I have a fear of the ocean um, instead of just water. And I have lots of other fears, you know, but this one really sticks with me. It was something that You know, as I became a teenager, I just never wanted to get wet. Once I've taken a shower, cleaned up, I'm nice and dry. I like to stay that way. Um, I don't like getting splashed, even in the pool. I mean, I used to do it when I was a child. But, you know, as an adult, when you're in a pool, you're usually just lounging. You're not uh, swimming around, jumping, splashing, you know. At least I'm not. And um, so I just don't like being wet when I don't want to be wet. And I think that 
is more of the fear than the water itself, if this makes any sense to anybody. Because I, I just, I kind of wanted to elaborate on it because I did say that I was, you know, you guys are swimming with sharks and this is scary and there's seals and there's hammerheads and the water's warming and ah. But at the end of the day, you might enjoy being out in that ocean. You enjoy this area where you're completely and absolutely exposed and unsafe because you're just a bag of blood floating in a giant body of water with no way to survive if you get tired, pulled under, you know, a shark attack, whatever. I find all of those elements, because they're out of my control, um, to be extremely scary. And uh, a lot of people out there don't. You know, and I have to understand that my fears and my uh, trials and my struggles and everything that I go through are all mine. They're all mine. And even if people have these type of struggles and people have these type of fears, we still don't share all the same things. But when I started really thinking about this fear of water, I realized it wasn't a fear of water, it's a fear of the ocean, which is different, right? So I started looking at my fears, and I was like, man, I have been afraid of getting fat for my entire life. And when I started thinking about that, I was like, where did that come from? And it According to my memories, now I'm going to say they're not really that great, but um, <laughs> I do have some, all right? I do have some. They're still there, but they're foggy. I don't know if they're always true. I question them um, because a lot of these things that I have carried with me, um, you know, I carried while I was drunk, so they probably got a little flooded and uh, the, 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 the photos have become blurry and or water damaged, right? So that's like the best analogy I can use for everybody. So my memories are not that great. But I do remember a time when I was a little kid. You know, I could have been nine. I could have been 13. I don't quite remember exactly when it was. Um, but, you know, my dad told me, and he, he was like, look, when you get to this age, and of course, as time went on, the age kept moving. So this has been something that has been said to me a bunch of times over my life. And, you know, it wasn't until probably like three years ago where, you know, it, it obviously wasn't going to happen. But this has been embedded in me for over 30 years. So I was like, I just can't make this go away, right? So my fear of getting fat came from my dad telling me that one day you're going to grow up and you're going to have a big old gut just like me. And, oh, that might sound horrible to somebody out there. That might sound cruel. It might, oh, I can't believe you would say. You know what? I actually thank my dad for giving me this fear of being fat. It was something that stuck with me so much when I was in my younger years that, yes, did it cause me to do things that probably were not appropriate for a, 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 12, a 9 to 12-year-old or an early teen child who should be eating and packing on weight? Is this really the fear you want to dump into your child? Probably not, right? But I thank him today. Because why? Because when I started to see my face fatten up, when I started to see a gut on my belly, I freaked out. I stopped eating. I would start running. I would start biking. I would do anything I could to make sure that whatever was going to happen didn't. So I don't really look at this fear of being fat as a bad thing. Because I believe more people should be afraid of it. 
Um, <laughs> I really do. I think everybody out there should be afraid of getting fat today. Um, if you, you know, if you can't use Ozempic or, 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 uh, whatever these other ones are, Zepbound and a few others, if you, if you can't stop eating, you know what I mean? You have, I, I mean, I loved using the fear of getting fat as a tool in my life, always, even as a child to stop eating. Yeah. To stop eating. I would stop eating. And I know it's not great for a developing child, but this was a fear I had, right? I had this fear of getting fat because of my father and I utilized it and used it to make sure I never, ever got fat. Now, did that hurt me a little bit today? Yes, because now I can't gain weight. I can't put on pounds because every time I start to see the thickness show up, I literally panic in my mind. So is it healthy or is it not healthy? I, I, I honestly think that it's a little bit of both, right? Because it made choosing to do a five-day water fast that much easier. It was so easy for me to choose to do a five-day water fast because why? Because I've already tortured myself for over 30 years of not eating. I've gone days without eating when I was a kid. I've gone hours. I've gone weeks. No, not weeks. That's a lie. See, there we go with the editing. Um, but I'm keeping it in mind. I'm keeping it in mind. No editing today. Um, but yeah, no, not weeks. That's, 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 that's too long. It was, it was more of just maybe like a day. It was more of just a day when I was a kid, I would stop eating or I wouldn't eat my lunch at school. I'd pass it out to somebody. I'd figure out a way to make that food go away without throwing it away. I, I have a problem with throwing things away. Even today, I'm like, oh, I've been hanging on to this computer part for 10 years. <sighs> What are you doing? Why are you saving that? So I have a fear of letting go too. I have lots and lots of fears. The fear of letting go is really something that bothers me because that could turn into a hoarding situation. So to alleviate that pressure, I've always kind of tried to go by my mom's rule, which is if you haven't worn it or used it in a year, get rid of it. It's never going to happen. And you know what? I put this to the test a bunch of times. And how I did that was by um, literally dating things in my house. Now, not my clothing or anything like that. I obviously kind of got a rough scale of when I bought this shirt or when I did this. And I'm like, okay, so... Let's see if I wear it in the next year. You know, I know I have clothing that's like five, six, seven years old. I just got rid of a whole bunch of clothing uh, because of the simple fact that, you know, it had been hanging around <clears throat> for years, years and years and years and years and years. So I was like, man, this stuff has got to go. And then my wife turns around and she goes, hey, hey. We should give this stuff to the nephews. Now, I talked to my brother-in-law, and he was very thankful that I did not bring them any of my clothes. And I was like, we're not doing this. Why? Because that box of clothing would have sat in my garage like the bike ramps and skateboard ramps that I've had. Well, let's see. When did I buy my Sentra? I bought my Sentra almost two and a half months ago at this point. And uh, the ramps are still sitting in my garage. They have not made it to the nephews. They have not made it to the nieces. So what does that tell me? That tells me the clothing would be sitting right next to those ramps, right? <laughs> That's what's going to happen. So I'm like, no, this is going to the city of Manchester. Goodbye clothing. Now, I also will say that, yes, possibly I could have taken these clothes and donated them to the bin and done the thing or gone to Goodwill or I could have done so many things with these clothes. But at the end of the day, 
half of them would have been thrown away. The other half was reasonably salvageable. But at the end of the day, none of these people wanted them. Most of those clothing bins are being lived in today. So why am I going to go and add to people's trash? Because that's what people are using these things for. Literally nobody, maybe very little people, are actually disposing of stuff that is usable. It's all just garbage. And they go, well, it's clothing, so I'll put it in here and let them sort it out. But I feel better because I donated. You didn't donate. You threw away your trash into an area that was supposed to be donatable, and now it's not. And now all these bins and uh, these, these, these stores and uh, the, the thrift shops, they've just become a recycling center in a sense. And a lot of them, you know, when you go to drop off stuff, they're really picking through it now because they don't want to pick through it later, and they already have 5,000 bins that they have to dig through and sort. So they become a sorting center. And it costs a lot of money to do that. And they don't pay, you know, as well as they should. Nobody does today in New Hampshire. Our minimum wage is still seven twenty-five. dollars So at the end of the day, are you actually donating or are you just adding to the trash? And I felt like I would just be adding to the trash. So why not just cut to the chase? and throw it in the trash. But that rule of not using it for one year and then disposing of it, like I said, I put it to the test. I've had stuff for two, three years that I still haven't touched or worn. So my mom is right. My mom's always right. Moms are always right. You got to listen to your mothers, everybody. You got to listen to them um, because they're always right. They got some great knowledge and uh, they deal with a lot. And... um, You know, so I've taken that into consideration and that has helped me with my fear of letting go. Now, why am I getting into fears today? Because I've had a lot of things going on and I've had a lot of fears. I've had a lot of stuff and a lot of my fears really vanished um, when I started jujitsu. That's right. Martial arts helped me with fears. Imagine that. You know, and I I, I love jujitsu. I love it more than alcohol. I, I, I really do love it more than life itself. It's one of the things that sometimes is extremely hard to get to, but also extremely rewarding once you've gotten there and you do it. And the fears that it's taken away from me is, you know, being in crowded areas, um, knowing whether or not I can defend myself, Um, and having confidence in myself to be able to take care of situations. Um, all, and I mean, the fear of bare feet. That's right. I have a fear of bare feet. I didn't like it. I didn't like walking around the grass. I wear shoes in my house. Now they are house shoes because I hate slippers, but again, in socks, in shoes, I don't like bare feet on the floor because I have dogs and I know the floor is dirty. So I won't walk around on my floor because you're going to get dirt and your feet turn black and ah, it's just, it's so gross. So there's another fear, right? But jujitsu has helped me with this tremendously. Do I have as big of a fear of uh, the bare feet thing now? No. Do I like dirty feet? Absolutely not. No. And I'm not a foot person, so don't, Don't get this twisted. Um, I don't enjoy feet really at all. Um, uh, I don't know. I just have a fear of them. I don't like them. But jujitsu has helped me get over a lot of the fears that I have with feet. Um, Just being bare and being out there. But these are all things that took time to get over. Um, and, but jujitsu is just an amazing, amazing tool. And if you can't get into jujitsu, get into Muay Thai, um, get into karate, you know, get into anything that's going to challenge you because most of us have a fear of being challenged. 
We have a fear of failing and we have a fear of getting hurt. I think that is a common fear that we all carry with us. And all of those things vanish over time with martial arts. It's amazing. I don't, I don't have a lot of those fears anymore. I'm not afraid to fail because I have tried so many things in jiu-jitsu and failed in the moment that's, you know, cost, caused me to tap. That's caused me to lose position and have to restart. That's caused me to, you know, go, oh, shit. You know, they just got my back. Um, so making a wrong move in the middle of a Randori match will cause you to lose that match. Now, we don't really call it losing. We call it learning, right? Because we're just training. But you did tap. You did lose. So that is... You know, true. It is true that that, that 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 would happen. But that fear of getting tapped or, or, or losing, in a sense, that also vanishes. Because now I'm at the point with my jujitsu and my life where I know my body, right? I know my, I mean, the fear of getting injured, um, that kind of vanishes too because you just learn to live with injuries. You do. You really do. You really do learn to live with your injuries. It sucks. You know, holding a coffee cup with my right arm is very hard today. I have no push. I have no pull. Um, You know, my rib is getting a lot better, but I still don't have a pressure game. So I have lost a lot of my upper body movements, um, which was a shit ton of my game. It really was. I did not realize how much I depended on my arms, my torso, my pressure. And I just don't have it as much as I want to have it today because of my injuries. So now this has brought in a new fear. Well, I have to use my feet. I have to use my legs. Well, I don't use my legs. I spent almost 10 years just using upper body, right? I do use, utilize my legs. I, I do this. I do guard. I climb into triangles there's there's all kinds of things you're using your legs for you know you're using them for sweeps and blah 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 blah. i could go down a fucking giant list of what i do use my legs for but am i using my legs to hold distance to change positions to hold people in place no no i would never right can i replace my guard quickly eh, not really Sometimes it's very difficult for me, but I also have hip problems. It likes to lock up, so I have to deal with that. Hey, look, you learn to utilize your body in the way that it's going to move, the way it's going to work. But now I have to take this fear of using my legs in my jujitsu game, and I have to make it my game. That is a giant fear because now I have more possibilities of people passing my guard and getting in and getting the tap. Why? Because I haven't utilized my legs as much as I should have, and now they are a weakness. So, there's another one, you know? It, 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 there's so many things I believe that we, as people, kids, young adults, and adults, have fears of today. Whether it has been introduced uh, by your parents at an early childhood, childhood or whether or not it has been something that you just have a fear of. Um, you can try and you can accomplish getting over these fears if you put in work. I'm not saying that they go away 100%. Like I said, I still can't walk around my house in bare feet. I just can't do it. So I still have certain things that bother me but I don't consider them to be a fear anymore, which is nice because it shows me that I'm growing. It shows me that I'm getting over things. It shows me that I'm putting in the work and I'm getting shit done. So if you have any of these types of things going on for you, take a look at it. See where it started. See if you can dig into it and maybe analyze it a little bit to the extent of understanding it 
and maybe see where it came from. Maybe it is just something that would someone planted a seed and you actually don't have a fear of it, but you've just been carrying around this worry about it, right? I think a lot of my stuff is maybe less a fear and more of a worry. I also think that a lot of the stuff that I do today um, is just because it's something that I've always done throughout my entire life. And as I become more and more separated from alcohol and I learn more and more and more about myself, um, since I can remember things now and I can retain information and I journal and I have all these records and all these ways to understand the person that I am today, it makes it easier to open these boxes, look at these things, and actually understand why I do this stuff. Understand where this stuff comes from. And I always had a fear of my anger being this tool that I would always go to. And I have to say, within the last month, it has changed drastically. Have I gotten upset in the last month? Yes. Yes, I have. Something has definitely irritated me. I was irritated today. I didn't think I was going to be able to record this. But here I am putting in the work. So, again, I didn't flip out, but I was irritated with myself. I just pushed through all the emotion, got what I needed to get done, done. And then I sat down and I started recording this podcast today. All before work with very little time, but I'm managing it and I'm doing it. And that was a fear that I wasn't going to be able to accomplish this. It just goes to show me that I can't let my anger get in my way anymore. It, it has been so much better around the house in the last month without Topher running around, <laughs> yelling and screaming, and getting mad. There was one incident that I was... Uh, getting ready to put up last week's podcast on Spotify. And it was really weird. I put in all the descriptive information. I put in all the timestamps, all the links. And then I went to go put in the picture. And the web page refreshed on me. And cleared everything out. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa what the fuck happened? What happened? And I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I look. Checking on time. So I take a look, and I go, oh, my God, what have I done? So I I, I didn't do anything. I'm like, why is it doing this? So I do it all again. Go to put in the picture. Does it again. I went, all right, now I'm angry, right? Now I'm getting a little heated because I just typed out the information twice. So what do I do? I get a little upset. I raise my voice a little bit, but then realize I'm talking to a computer. This is worthless. So, I refresh the browser. Then I shut the browser down. Then I open it, restart it, open it back up. Because why? Because it already refreshed on me twice. So, just kill the damn thing, right? I open it back up. I open up Spotify. I, I click on it. And all of a sudden, I hit the next button. And all the information's there. Oh. So there was like a, it was like a hiccup. But when I opened up Spotify, went back into the episode, all the information was there. So it was just a glitch, right? So I didn't get too mad. You know, I raised my voice a little bit because, yeah, I'm frustrated. I just typed this out twice. That's annoying. But we can't let that turn into anger, right? I can't. I can't let it turn into anger anymore. Just because I'm annoyed doesn't mean I have to get angry. So because of that, I was like, holy shit, look at that. I hit next, I hit back, I added the pictures, I finished the poll, and I uploaded it. So are we going to have times where we get irritated or upset about something not working? Well, I always do. I hate technology. It has not made my life easier. And with every update, you break me, everybody. It's so crazy. I have to learn something all over again. I hate it so much. Like, don't get me wrong. 
I hate change and I love change all at the same time. Change is inevitable. It's always going to be happening. It's always something we're going to be dealing with. But at the end of the day, do you have to change a goddamn app fucking three, four times a month? Do you have to have an update every, I don't know, three weeks? Whatever it is. I feel like I'm updating certain apps every week. And they're constantly changing or they're moving the add to your story from here to over here. Oh, we're just going to switch it back. We're going to switch it. We're going to switch it back. We're going to add a little button right here. Like, why? If it's not broken, don't fix it. If you're going to do updates to an app, hey, make it worth it. You know what I mean? Don't update it every week. Try doing it once a month and just have a whole bunch of shit change. Like, it's just so, It's for me, as a 44-year-old man, some of this shit is so ridiculous. Now, real quick, I was training somebody, right? New person at the register. We're going through it. All of a sudden, she gets, somebody comes up. I had to walk back over, and she's already done with the sale. I was blown away. Literally rang three people up and then took an order on her own. No, that doesn't really happen. Doesn't really happen. You know, I'm not saying that these POS systems are super complicated. I'm not saying it's the most difficult thing in the world. But I was like, wow, it just, it, she made it look so easy. And that's when I looked at her and I go, how old are you? And she goes, I'm 16. And I went, oh, because they've grown up with a, friggin' device in their hand since they were a toddler because every parent uses them as a security blanket or babysitter. It's really gross. I, I, I think we're going to eventually find out you're going to have to put an age on these stupid phones and this inter- sh- internet shit because you can't keep the kids out. No matter what safeties you put up, now they got all kinds of ways to put up educational videos. And, uh, yeah, it's just... It's just porn. It's just nakedness. It's, it's, it's not, it's not educational, but because it's labeled educational, it's okay. But if I say jujitsu is better than an antidepressant, well, take that fucking video down, right? You, it's so wrong. So even with all the parental, uh, 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 things that you can put in for your kids, if it's labeled an educational video, those will get through and a lot of them are being labeled educational videos so they can get through. So also keep that in mind. And now that I've trailed off, I don't remember what I was talking about. So on that note, we're going to take a quick break so you can hear from my sponsor. Hey, fashion lovers, are you ready to make a statement here at Slow Down Clothing, your ultimate destination for tattooed inspired prints and vibrant colors that'll turn heads wherever you go? Imagine stepping out in style with our eye-catching t-shirts, perfect for making every day feel like a runway. And it doesn't stop there. Our embroidered hats add that perfect finishing touch to your look back to school season is just around the corner and we've got a fantastic selection of kids tees that will have your little ones looking sharp and feeling comfy still planning on soaking out the sun don't worry slow down clothing has you covered with our range of beach towels and swimwear enjoy those sizzling sunny days in style so why wait head over to slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com and explore the incredible collection today and here's the best part when you fill up your cart with all those amazing items don't forget to use promo code t-o-p-h-e-r at checkout for a sweet 10 percent off your entire purchase slow down clothing where fashion meets fun transform your wardrobe and make every day extraordinary remember life is too short for boring clothes shop now and let your style shine Visit slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. Style awaits. All right, and we are back with this non-edited episode. Uh, There'll probably be a little bit of editing at this point. We are going to do some quick uh, Topher's Topics. 
All right, so I'm going to pull up a few things. We're going to kind of, you know, this is what I do. I discuss things, uh, things that are going on today. So they are now saying that cancer deaths are among men predicted to increase by 93% by 2050 study fines. Let's listen to the video real quick because I want to know what they're going to say is the issue, and I'm pretty sure everybody out there already knows what I think the issue is. So we're going to turn now to new researchers uh, warning that cancer in men is expected to skyrocket over the next 25 years with new cases projected to rise as much as 84% and deaths could nearly double, all this according to a new study. Our CBS News chief medical correspondent, Dr. John LaPook, is here. Dr. LaPook, thank you for being here. What is going on? Tony, this study specifically looked at men. We know from previous research in 2020 that cancer death rates around the world are about 43% higher in men than in women. So this study today looked at, okay, what do we expect over the next 25 years? And it turns out that it translates to about 5 million more deaths per year in men in 2050 compared to today. So why an increase in certain types of cancer for men, but not for women? It's complicated, but one reason is a difference in exposure. So you have certain cancer risk factors, for example, cigarette smoking and alcohol consumption is higher in men than in women. There are other possible culprits like exposure to environmental toxins, genetic factors, and willingness to participate in cancer screenings. The good news is that many of these cancers, about 40% in a recent U.S. study, are preventable. Well, that does raise the question that some people don't often like to think about. What can they do to change their life to lower their risk? By far, not smoking is the single most important thing. You know, it turns out that about 30% of cancer deaths in the United States are from smoking. And after that, exercising, maintaining a healthy body weight, limiting red meat and processed foods, as well as alcohol. Okay, fine. I can agree with this. I think it's very true. I've been saying this forever. Sugar is a is a cancer it's a cancer feeder uh alcohol turns into sugar it's a cancer feeder preservatives in our food is definitely a problem it's definitely a problem and also uh keep in mind that smoking is absolutely horrible for you finding a way to take in nicotine absolutely have to go with uh, I'm sorry, vaping or pouches. Uh, you really, it, vaping is not great for you. It's, it's, it's definitely healthier than smoking. It really is. Um, I, I, I'm an example of it, right? I, I, I smoked for 27 years. I vaped for 10 years, and now I'm on pouches for almost two, everybody, um, with no vaping or smoking. You have to get away from the cigarettes. Those carcinogens and all the chemicals in the cigarettes are horrible. Red meat, I disagree with. There's nothing wrong with red meat. I am so sick of this being said. There's nothing wrong with it. No, no. Red meat is good for you. It is really good for you. It's the only thing I fucking eat is red meat. Chicken is a foul animal. It is disgusting. Disgusting. If you are served safe or you work with raw chicken or you look into how this stuff is processed, it's the filthiest fucking thing that we put in our mouth on the planet. It is absolutely disgusting. I'm sorry. We sell a ton of chicken, like 40 fucking pounds a day is what I sell in chicken and sandwiches. It's, it's gross. It's a dirty bird, everybody. It's a dirty, dirty bird. So I don't agree with the red meat thing. It's this thing that keeps being put out there over time, and it just continues. Oh, you can't do salt. You can't do this. You, the, the, the cholesterol and the red meat. Go fuck yourselves, everybody. Done with this. Good cholesterols. Red meat is fine by itself. Stop adding condiments and this and that and breads and everything else. A slab of steak, some potatoes with just salt and some greens and maybe some Ezekiel toast is what I eat. That is super healthy for you. Are there some preservatives in the Ezekiel bread? Absolutely. But is it a bread bread? No. No, it's grains. It's great. It's good for you. It's good fiber. 
I love the Ezekiel bread. And if it's horrible for me, well then, too bad. It's one of the things I really enjoy. You know, having potatoes with nothing but a little bit of butter and, 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 and some Himalayan salt, you should be having at least six grams of good salt. Good salt. Not that shit you can buy five pounds for five bucks. You need some Himalayan. You need some Celtic salt. You need something good. So this leads me to, well, what could be causing more cancer in everybody? What could be causing more blood complications today in everybody? I think it has to do with mRNA. Yeah. Yeah, I think it all started there. It all started there. And it won't end. I said after the vaccinations, we were going to see a lot of problems. I still got vaccinated like a fucking idiot, and now I probably have nanobots inside me. I don't have nanobots inside me. No one's flipping a switch and turning this on. But at the end of the day, certain things are a cancer causer. I agree with most of what he said. But if you get on a healthy diet, you eat red meat, you eat healthy salts, you eat good cholesterols and good fats, and you don't add condiments and crap and get two dressings with your fucking salad, you'll probably have a better life. You'll feel better because you're not dumping toxins into your body. So just be mindful of what you're eating and you can lessen the chance. Now, exercise, there's many different sides of the fence for exercise. Some extremists say that too much exercise is a killer, which is why a lot of people who run and do all these things on the daily and exert themselves to an extreme, they're supposedly dying from heart attacks by the time of 50. Do I believe all of that as well? No, no, I don't. I believe in exercise. I believe in pushing yourself. I believe in all of these things. They're good for you. But again, to an extent, you can take anything too far and you can do everything too little. But you got to find that in between that works for you, not for everybody else, works for you, and keep it there and maintain. And I think that is the best way for everybody to live a healthy life. All right, so Lily demands doctors stop selling copycat weight loss drugs. That's right, Lily, everybody, who is the owner of Ozempic, does not want people to buy ZepBound. Now, why is that? Why is it? Oh, because the one compound that actually keeps you from eating is the only thing in ZepBound. It's the only thing in it. It's not a blood thinner. Ozempic wants to be on the top. It wants all your money. But it's a blood thinner. What does this tell you? You can't tell a pharmaceutical it can't sell its knockoff brand. We have knockoff brands for all pharmaceuticals. Why? Because nobody can afford the fucking actual ones and the knockoffs are the same shit. Most of the time, they're a little bit better for you. They're more affordable and they don't have some of the stuff in them. I've brought this up so many times now that I don't even know if anybody even is listening to this anymore. But this keeps coming up over and over and over again where these companies are trying to push something that thins your blood. I'm, I just don't think it's a great idea. I have heard nothing but good things about ZepBound. Nothing but good things. Um, and now they are trying to eliminate this. Um, Eli Lilly has sent cease and desist orders. This is ridiculous, everybody, to the U.S. healthcare providers in recent days to stop the promotion of the compound versions of its drugs for weight loss and diabetes as their supply increases. The company said on Wednesday, the letters were sent to the telegraph companies, wellness centers, and medical spas selling compound versions of drug makers, popular treatment, ZepBound, and Majaro. A spokesperson told 
uh, rooters. When FDA-approved medicines are commercially available, compounders cannot regularly, excuse me, cannot regularly make essentially a copy of them. The company said it is in its emailed statement. Compound drugs are custom-made medicines that are based on the same ingredients as branded drugs because Zepbound and Majaro, both known chemically as tyrezepadid, I don't even know, were in short, short supply. They could be legally produced. They could be legally produced by licensed pharmacists in the U.S. So because there has been such a giant shortage on these drugs, these guys came up with the same compound, figured out how to make it, and they made an alternative because there's a shortage on this shit. There's a shortage on this shit because everybody's using this as a fucking trend. Let's be real about that. Most of the people that are taking this don't even fucking need it. They're just doing it because they were probably, I don't know, fucking throwing their food up or choosing not to eat for way too long of a period of time and actually causing harm to their body, right? Maybe they, they like to eat and throw it up. So, so what? So because we could make an alternative to this drug, you want this to stop because you want to be the one and only, but you're also saying it's because... These guys are now taking that compound away from you, which is going to cause a shortage in Ozempic. Well, that's probably a good thing. That's probably a good thing, I think. I don't believe that a drug that was meant to thin your blood, to stop diabetes or whatever it was doing, I don't think it's a good idea to be using that as a weight loss drug. I think Zepbound and Majaro are a better alternative. And I've talked to many people that are using these and they're getting better results. They're getting great results. I know somebody that has lost over 50 fucking pounds in like four months. It's amazing. When you have an addiction to food, you need an assist. When I got off of alcohol, I used sugar to help me assist me staying away from alcohol. Everybody needs an alternative to sometimes help them away from their addiction. So I'm not against that. But I do believe that these guys are really, really trying to push something that everybody's going to see a problem with soon. You know? Just like the cancer, just like the friggin' shots, just like all of this, man. It's crazy. Now, I'm going to leave you with one last thing before I get going because I am out of time. All right? All right, so I'm going to leave you all with this. I can't zoom in. Instagram sucks. But check this out. I thought this was really interesting. Sort of catastrophic false flag event on September 23rd. I believe of this year and I'm going to show you all the predictive programming that said that this is going to happen in the Big Bang Theory an asteroid strikes on September 23rd in the movie this is the end on September 23rd is the rapture in the movie pandemic an outbreak happens on September 23rd Ghostbusters evil is released on September 23rd in the movie Tomorrowland disaster strikes on September 23rd in the movie Little Shop of Horrors, humans are threatened by some sort of event that happens on again September 23rd. In the movie Knowing, a solar flare strikes on September 22nd and lasts till the 23rd. In the movie Seeking a Friend for the End of the World, an asteroid strikes on September 23rd. Julie and Julia, meteor strikes September 23rd. In the movie Sleepy Hollow, dimensions open up on September 23rd. Now you get my point. Predictive programming is something that the psychopaths that rule this world utilize to show you what they're going to do previous to them doing it because it alleviates their karma. Essentially, they're telling you what they're going to do and you guys are agreeing. Now, they are more than likely going to use Project Bluebeam, which is something that they've perfected where they use holograms to bring in an antichrist or some sort of cataclysmic event, UFOs, meteor strikes, something. Now, all this predictive programming on September 23rd didn't specify the year, but with everything going on in the world, it could be the September 23rd coming up. And hopefully this reaches enough people where they got to call off their plans. Peace and love. That is 
Crazy, everybody. Project Bluebeam was mentioned on this podcast two years ago. I still haven't found the clip for Magella, and I apologize. But he mentioned it. He said it was going to happen. Now, we've had all kinds of things. We had the Antichrist that was supposed to be reborn. That didn't happen at the temple. Uh, We were supposed to have the bloodiest day from Iran attacking Israel on the 12th or the 13th. That didn't happen. And now we are basically saying that September 23rd, something is going to happen, but I don't believe it's going to. I don't believe it. They might try to push Project Bluebeam and do all of these things, which, I mean, should bring the world together, but it also could encourage the one world order, which is what we are all fearing right now. I'm telling you, that is a fear of mine. This one world order is bullshit. It is bullshit. I will not be happy. I want everything. Then I'll be happy. I'm sorry. You can't tell me that I'm going to have nothing and be happy. It's not going to work. You're not going to pull the wool over my eyes with Project Blue Beam and be like, aliens are attacking. This is happening. But September 23rd is not that far away, everybody. Not that far away. It is August 29th today, right? So, hey, there is some shit going down in probably like, what, 24 days? We'll see what happens. I doubt it. The end of the world was supposed to happen, I think, four times in my lifetime, um, and nothing has happened. It's this fear-driven bullshit. It's just like monkeypox. It's just like COVID. It's just like everything that they are holding on to, this this uh, disease, this this virus thing that's in the water or something. I don't even remember what they call it, but it's like a flu. Um, it, it's all bullshit. They give them these scary names, these scary names, and I hope you're scared. Keep your mask on. Come get your shots. Come get your vaccines. By the way, aliens are coming, and we have to protect you. Look. Miguela mentioned this. I want to thank you, Elijah, for sending me that clip. Absolutely bullshit, everybody. It's all fear-driven bullshit. And the only thing that keeps this alive is you being afraid. That's it. That's all that drives this. And as long as you are afraid... This is going to be easy for them. So one of the fears I want all of us to get over is anything that the government throws at us. We should not fear what they say. We should not. They are lying to you. They are lying to me. They are never going to tell us the truth ever. And we should all understand that. So if they are telling you to get a shot, don't. If they are telling you that this is going to happen, it won't. And if they're telling you it's going to help you, they are literally lying to your face, just like they're lying to mine. The only difference is is I don't have a fear of it, and I ain't fucking listening no more. But if you are still, I'm telling you right now, don't. Our government will never help us. They will never do anything that makes sense life easy or us healthier and they have their own interests in mind not ours so i hope everybody out there can get over their fears today i hope everybody out there looks at their fears that they're dealing with right now and maybe maybe just maybe it'll help you get over it or maybe you got some fears you need to go and uh battle and The only way to do that is hopefully on the mats. All right. So I want to say thank you to everybody out there. This is uh, unedited. Well, there'll be a little bit of editing, Uh, but this is mostly an unedited episode. I hope you enjoy it. The reason I'm trying to get into this is I might have to travel for work and I'm thinking about doing live episodes. I'm actually thinking about doing live episodes now, but. Again, I'm a little afraid of that. 
Um, so, cause that's absolutely no editing. And, um, that's, that's a giant thing for me. Okay. So fear, we can get over it. We can beat it. You just have to put in the work and the effort to do it like everything else in life. And, uh, on that note, everybody, I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. As always, if you're new, subscribe, hit that button. All right. It's free for you. This is not free to do. Of course, if you want to tell your story, you got a story that needs to be heard, or you want to be on the podcast as a guest, T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com is the official email. Send your emails. And then, of course, the Linktree link is in the description below the video, along with all the links that I have talked about today. Go ahead and click that, follow and subscribe. And on that note, everybody, I hope you have an amazing Thursday. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. And as always... I will talk to you later.